control grid's an interesting thing. A lot of people don't realise what they're involved in. Just the simple fact of using credit cards, using smartphones, and all of this automated system is the problem. People don't realise what it is. This, this system we're being led into is the new world order in itself. The 5G smart grid is the new world order, the Internet of Things. It's the new world order. People don't really understand how that works, but what it's about is monitoring every single aspect of your life. The smart grid is being presented to people as this thing that's going to be highly beneficial to us. You know, you'll only be using the electricity that you use, you'll only be paying for that, all this sort of stuff. So it's been presented as a really positive thing. But what it will do, it will put a dollar value on absolutely every aspect of your life. So that every time you turn on a tap, a credit goes, every time you turn on a light, every time you watch your TV, every time you boil your jug, every time you do anything, there's a dollar value attached to it. There's an interesting TV show that came out um, a couple of years ago called Black Mirror. And they had one episode of that where everybody, the only job they had was running on a treadmill or pin, spinning a bike and just to accumulate credits and they had to pay for every single action that they performed. And that's what the smart grid is. That's what we're being led into. And it's all about digital currency and control of everything. And if you're someone who lives a slightly alternate lifestyle, say you grow a few vegetables and you give some to your, your neighbours or you do a little bit of massage for someone or you do a bit of tarot reading or something like this, the only way you're going to be able to get paid for that once the smart grid comes online is through the transfer of digital credits, which means the government will get a tax. You'll have to put it on your income tax or, or everything will be monitored. That's what it's about, complete blanket surveillance of every single action people are doing. That's what the smart grid is. And it's being rolled out underneath everything else while we're arguing about all of these issues and being given all of these global conflicts and all of these theater of politics to fight and squabble about. Underneath all of that is this smart grid. And it's rolling out very, very quickly. And the smart grid, the 5G grid, underlying that is the fact that the 5G system that they're using to run the smart grid, the Internet of Things, has also been used by the military. It's a military-grade technology. It's basically an active denial system. So the 5G grid not only will track everything you do, it can be used as a weapon. It can be used as a microwave cannon. It can be used to disable people, to track people. It can see through walls. It can see what you're carrying, whether you're carrying money, whether you're carrying a weapon, all of this sort of stuff. So it's very, very evasive. Plus it does all sorts of damage to us biologically. You know, it damages our cell structure, damages the cell structure of all food, changes the cell structure of everything that it comes into contact with. And the 5G system will be a blanket system, blanket wave of communication. You know, we've got situations now where you, you lose signal on your mobile phone if you move too far away from a tower. That won't happen with the 5G. It will be everywhere, right across the country, in rural areas, everywhere you'll be able to get perfect signal. So everyone's going to kind of welcome this, but they don't realise what it is. It's about everything talking to everything else and everything tracking everything else. And also with the smart grid, it turns virtually every smart appliance into a surveillance system. There's been a new law passed in Australia where police have just been given the permission to tune into smart devices and listen to what's going on in people's homes. They can tune into your refrigerator. A lot of people don't realise your smart fridge has a microphone. They can tune in and listen to the conversations you're having in your kitchen. So anybody who's targeted for any reason at all, if they've got suspicions about anybody, they can just tune in, listen to their devices, their mobile phones, their refrigerators, their televisions, turn their cameras on, watch them through the television all the stuff that they're doing. This is what the smart grid is. And this is being rolled out underneath everything. And, and we've got so many people distracted on so many issues trying to address the government corruption and all of this stuff. They're not realizing that this is all rolling out. And in another three or four to five years, they're just gonna wake up and go, what happened? How did I suddenly find myself in this digital prison? Because that's what it is. That's virtually what it is. It's a digital prison, a digital control grid. And if you want to participate in this society, you're going to have to participate in the smart grid. So we need to look at what it is and what it's going to be used for and realize that the technology that we've got, we could use for our benefit. You know, All of this stuff could be used in completely different ways, in completely different directions. A smart grid could be used to the great benefit of mankind, and it's being presented in that way. But when you look at the people who are running it, the people who are running the world, well, the world's run by criminals and they're not going to use this in the right way. They have no intention of it. And if you look at some of the white papers they've put out themselves, uh, papers that have been put out by the Pentagon recently that talk about a uh, federal vision for future computing and the nanotechnology grand challenge, and they talk about this 15-year plan they've got to roll all this out and eventually hand it all over to AI to control. And uh, when we get to that point, then we've got the entire human experience being controlled by a machine, 
which will dictate everything according to an economic value and dictate everybody's value according to their economic worth. So this is a very, very bad situation for mankind to be led into under the guise of convenience and uh, making our lives easier. It's really not going to do that at all. Well, they're doing it through the Internet of Things is how it's all being rolled out. You know? And basically, it, what, what is essential for the whole thing to happen is digital currency. They've got to digitise currency, remove all cash from the, from the system. And you're getting that here in Denmark. We were talking, discussing with people today. Um, you can only ride the trains. You've got to pay for it with your mobile phone. What if you don't have a mobile phone? And if you don't log on, you've got to log on to the train. And then if you don't log off when you get off the train, it keeps taking your money and suddenly your, your account is, is, uh, has been depleted because you forgot to log off when you get off the train. Now they could make all these sorts of things convenient. Now you could pay for that and it could just gauge your trip. You didn't have to log off, but they do that so that it depletes your account so that people want the smart grid. They make all these inconveniences. They put all these systems in place and make it inconvenient for you. You could forget to log off. You could forget to swipe your card when you leave the train. So suddenly all your money's gone. So they put these situations in place to make people want this grid to come online. Recently, when I came to, uh, to check into uh, uh, the United States, I got to the, the um, uh, passport counter. 16 counters there, two of them were open. Four aeroplanes arrived, 1,200 people waiting to get through, two passport counters. Took us two and a half hours to get our passports stamped because that way you want the retinal scanners, you want the smart grid, it's much more convenient. So they make it inconvenient for you all across the world and people don't notice it. They just think it's hard to do things and they want it, they welcome it. And meanwhile, they're focused on all of these battles and all these theatres of politics and all this stuff that they think is the problem, that they think they can address it, they think we can vote people in, vote people out, whatever, put a new figurehead up there that will do the right thing for us. But underneath it all is this grid. And that's how they're gonna do it. They just make it very, very inconvenient for you not to participate in the smart system and so much easier when you do. And so people welcome it. You know, and that's, that's the way it's going. You know, a lot of people are going to welcome this smart system. A lot of people are going to welcome instant communication. They're going to see it as a way to free the world. And like I said, it could be used to free the world, but it's not. It's going to be used to lock down the world because underneath it is the surveillance system that is the smart grid. And underneath that is the weapons system that it could be turned into if you don't comply with the smart grid. And it gets to the point where if you, you do decide not to comply, you become a dissident, they can simply switch you off, switch your chip off. And once it's all digital and you need that chip to get into your car, to get into your house, to access your bank account, to buy things, it's all automatic, suddenly you're locked out of the system. So there's no hope of dissent. There's no hope of free, free thought. There's no hope of questioning any of this. You just have to simply go with the, thro go with the flow. Because in the smart grid, there will only be two types of human beings uh, that they're really concerned with. The smart grid will only, because it's gonna be run by AI, it'll only look at um, two types of human beings, those that are desirable and those that are undesirable. And that's it, that'll be the two classes that you're in. And where you are in the food chain will be uh, measured according to your economic worth. You know, and that's another um, important thing people need to look about AI and what is going to be running the system is the fact that it's judging everybody according to their economic worth. It's putting a dollar value on everything. And all you've got to do is go and analyse a corporation to realise it's a psychopath. So when you've got a system that is putting an economic value on every human life and every human action, this is a psychopathic system that will discard people if they cannot pay for every action they perform. And life was never supposed to be like that. But you know, they'll just do it through the convenience and do it through making life so inconvenient for people if they don't participate. And they're doing it here, they're doing it everywhere. Every country that I go to, I can see elements leading towards a cashless society. And it's being done under the guise of convenience, but that is the, the catalyst that's gonna hold it all together. This is why I encourage